Hello YouTube Pipers, Double O Pipe here, aka Rick. I have fixed my Medico VFQ, packed it full of, what did I pack it full of? I got so many sitting over here, full of velvet. So we're going to give that a try. And let me open this window for a little ventilation. kind of warm outside so well heck far spilling tobacco out of my bowl Today is Father's Day, and I wanted to wish all the fathers out there happy Father's Day. My son came over yesterday to spend the day because he wasn't able to make it today. And my daughter sent me a couple of things in the mail. And they got here today. I wasn't expecting anything today. See if that stays lit. Need to turn my stem here to the right angle. Otherwise, be sitting like that. Trying to get those leaves under that to light up taking their time doing it. Beverage. Well, my dad passed away a few years back, 1998. Three months shy of his birthday, he would have been 80 years old. He was born on the 13th, and he passed away on the 13th. He, he always said that was his number. <laughs> I think he joined the Navy on the 13th, too. Well... My dad was a born mechanic. When he was 16 in England, his dad had bought a motorcycle <clears throat> and it was having some problems. So my dad took it apart, piece by piece, laid everything out. I don't know if they had a driveway or what, but he had everything laid out and it was just stripped and his dad walked out and said what have you done <laughs> you've torn up my motorcycle how am I going to get back and forth and dad said I'll put it back together don't worry about it well they didn't say it like that to his dad but that's what he meant anyway he had it all put back together by the time his dad needed it. And it ran great. And that was just one of the times that he, 
he had a he had a mind that was brilliant when it came to mechanics and things. Me, I, I don't know how to do anything with that. I wish it had come down in my genes, but it sure didn't. My, my position when it came to fixing stuff was holding the light. And I got pretty darn proficient at that, holding the light just where he was working. Through the years, I found that a lot of us guys growing up became very proficient at holding the light. But he wanted it fixed right, so he had to do it himself. When, when he first brought us over here, he had to have a car to get back and forth to work. And the first job he had, he earned 25 cents an hour. And he saved up $200 and bought an old Buick. It was something from the 40s. I don't know exactly what. And it didn't run perfect. But he worked on it day and night. Spent more time outside working on that car than he did inside or at his job, practically. And Mom named the car Jezebel because she said he spent more time with that Jezebel than he did with me. <laughs> but he got it tuned up and running almost perfectly, purred. None of those pops and pings when he first drove it up. It purred and it drove very smooth for those days with the suspension that they had in those old cars. Like I said, he was a born mechanic. <clears throat> well, after that, he traded that car in at Ford Motor Company for a brand new Ford. He paid $200 for that old Buick, and because he had fixed it up so it, run, it would run as well as it did, they gave him $300 for a trade-in. That's saying something for those days. You got some noise coming from that direction. I don't know what it is. But anyway, he had a brand new Ford. I think it was a 1950 chartreuse. That was one of the new colors. I don't think I've ever seen a car since painted chartreuse, but this, this old Ford was chartreuse. Nice running car. He always, he always worked on his own cars, always had them run tip top. Every two years, though he was a mechanic of mechanics, every two years he would begin to complain about the car. He would come home from work and say to mom, I've been hearing that ping again. She said, well, can't you fix it? And he said, well, I can't really place that ping where it's coming from. And there'd be some other problem, he said. And there's the such and such going wrong, too. She said, well, can't you fix that? He said, well, it's a little more complicated than I'm used to. So when the excuses started coming that he couldn't fix something, we both knew that meant we're getting a new car. 
and this was prior to October now. In October, back in the 50s, we always looked forward to October. All the new cars came out, all the pictures in the, in the magazines, in the paper. Dad always, always loved a Ford, always loved a Ford. So we would go to the local Ford place, which was Paul Motor Company back in those days. Back when he traded in that Buick, the guy at Paul Motor said he hadn't driven a car that old that drove that well. He said, who's the mechanic that you got to fix it? And Dad said, I did. I fix it myself. He said, you mean you got that old car to run that well? And Dad said, yeah. And he said, I got a job for you in the back. I would really like you to come back there and talk to the guy. And my dad said, I already have a job. He said, you shouldn't be doing whatever you're doing. You're a mechanic, and you can, if you can fix that old jalopy to run that smoothly, you need to be here working in the service department, fixing cars. You're a, you're a born mechanic, man. Dad said, I'll think about it. And he said, do, think about it. I think Dad thought if he had a job where he had to go in and work on cars day in, day out, that the joy that he felt working on cars would just disappear. So he never did accept the man's, <clears throat> the man's offer of a job. He, um, every year, or every two years, he would go in and talk to the man. <clears throat> and every time the man would drive his car, he would never find anything wrong with it. But Dad always found those quirks that he couldn't he couldn't deal with. He wanted a new car. So we went into Paul Motor Company. And he would go in and the guy would welcome him. Always knew him by name and Dad knew him by name. And he'd say, that job's still open for you. And Dad said, I'll still think about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. At any rate, he would say, you looking for a new car? He said, it's about two years. And he said, yeah, I'm looking for a new car. He said, what do you have? And he said, we just got the brand new models in the show showroom. Come over here and take a look. And Dad would follow him over there, and Mom and I would just kind of sit down or wander around a bit. I always looked at the model cars that were in the showcase. And Dad would look at the car, and the guy say, you want to take a test drive? And he'd say, yeah, I would like to take a test drive. He said, well, you give me your keys, and I'll get another set of keys, and we'll go find a car that you want to try out in the back there, he said, okay. So they traded keys and dad would always go with him. He would go with him and take the car out. Well, about 20 minutes later, they'd come back. Dad would have a smile on his face. Mom would know right away he had found the car he was gonna buy. <clears throat> And he'd go into the room with the desk and sit down, and they would haggle over price. And it would take about 30 minutes. I think it still takes about that much time, if not more, than present day haggling over a car's price and dad would come out with a smile on his face he'd feel like he had gotten a good deal 
and he'd say to mom, he'd say, dear, go out and check the glove compartment, see if there's anything you need to take, because we're going home in a new car. So she'd go out and do that, and dad would look at me and say, so-and-so wants to show you something, he's got something for you. And I'd go over, and all the cars would be the new cars in model form. And he'd say, well, son, which one of these would you like to have? And I said, which one's like the one Dad's getting? And he'd say, this one right here. I said, that's the one I want. Every year I'd get, or every two years, I'd get a, a model car of the car that Dad had just bought. I wish I'd kept all those models. That would be quite a memory jogger there. But as with other things of childhood, they're lost in time. <clears throat> well, we'd drive home in our brand new Ford. Dad was a Ford man. He loved a new Ford. And as soon as we get home, Mom would go inside and start fixing something for us to eat. And Dad would pop the bonnet, as he called it, the hood. And right away, be under there checking things out to see what's what. And he had to make, make sure of what he had under that hood. And every two years, it was the same. Until about 1963, or was it, I don't know, 62 or 63. The car that he had just bought, pardon me, year before in October, brand new Ford. He was traveling down the road from a job he had to have that was at another part of the state. And he would come home every weekend. He worked there for several months and every weekend he would come home. And this particular weekend he fell asleep at the wheel and smashed into one of the pillars holding up a viaduct or whatever that thing is that goes across the road. And totaled his brand new Ford We had to go pick him up. It was a good ways out of Charleston. That he had totaled his car on the interstate coming back home. And something with that, I guess, I guess his life must have flashed before his eyes or something. I don't know. But with the crash of that car, the desire and the fever, the car fever, as we called it, had left him, and he he never he never had the urge to buy a brand new car again. And and he didn't go for Fords that much either. I think he started looking at Buicks for some reason. But anyway, those are the memories I have early childhood with my dad because that was that was his favorite thing is those brand new Fords every two years like clockwork he would start showing those pictures to mom and she would get the feeling it was it was the second year And when the ads came on TV, he would point them out and talk them up until he got her to go down with him that weekend to check out the brand new models of Ford at Paul Motor Company. And the guy would always ask him to come to work for him because he needed a good mechanic. And Dad would always say, I'll think about it. But he, he never really thought about it.
Yeah, those those are my fond memories of early childhood. And dad, dad never, he was a quiet guy. Very self-sustaining. Always good at what he did. Whenever he took something upon himself, he did it to the best of his ability, and it usually turned out better than the, the average person would do it. A very proud man. A very intelligent guy. He didn't finish school, but the things that he knew, he he knew he was very intelligent and he could figure things out and do math in his head he could do math that I had to sit down and figure out through paperwork and he'd have the answer within 10 seconds I say how'd you get that I don't know I just know that's what it is <laughs> so I never could get him to help me with my math homework because he didn't know how to do all that math homework. He just read the problem and knew the answer. It was, to me, it amazed me. And if something needed a part, he would make the part. He was an amazing man. And I really miss him. He was a good man too. I learned a I learned a lot from him. He has been gone now since like I said, nineteen nineteen ninety eight. Passed away January thirteenth, one day after my mother's birthday I was I was worried that he might pass away on her birthday which would alter the celebration of her birthday for the rest of her life but he didn't he seemed to it was almost like he knew that and he hung on till the 13th he was the love of my mother's life After all, she had asked him to marry her since it was a leap year. She didn't want to lose him. He was, we were sitting around talking to people and mom said, yeah, I, <clears throat> talking about movie stars and James Mason came up and mom said, yeah always reminded me of Al. That was my dad's name. And if she'd have left it there, that would have been fine. But she always, somehow it came out, he's ugly. Meaning James Mason is ugly. And my dad would get the look on his face every time. <laughs> if she'd have just said, he reminds me of James, or James Mason reminds me of dad, however she put it. And then she would always have that addendum. He's ugly, like Dad was ugly, but Dad. <laughs> we never let her forget that. Like I said, he was the love of her life, and she need, she never even thought about getting together with another man after Dad died, and she. She passed away on their anniversary. It would be today, 10 years ago. And I figured that they were able to meet up for their anniversary once again. Interesting, I thought, very interesting. They loved each other. Very, very much. 
And if his ship hadn't been crippled, they never would have met. Well, I've just been sitting here thinking about my dad and my parents. And I'm happy for all of you who still have your dad around with you. And for those of you who don't, happy, happy Father's Day to those passed away. hope your day has been a good day this Father's Day mine was very very good my two kids remembered me that's that's what counts they don't even have to buy gifts just you know being remembered is nice <laughs> all right I'm gonna stop Stop yakking now. One of these days I'll learn how to keep this thing lit. But you know, I really don't care. Take care of yourselves, everybody. I hope I didn't bore you with this because it wasn't really a story or anything. It was just remembrances. God bless you all. Take care of you.